Muchas gracias a todos y todas por estar esta tarde acompañándonos. Eh, bueno, esta conferencia de prensa, como saben, <coughs> cierra la visita del alto comisionado Zahir Adal Hussein a México, quien asumió el puesto en septiembre del año pasado. Esta es su primera visita a Latinoamérica, sin embargo, conoce la región por trabajos y por su labor diplomática anterior. Nos acompaña también Jesús Peña Palacios, representante ad interim de la Oficina en México del Alto Comisionado de las Naciones Unidas para los Derechos Humanos. Bueno, vamos a escuchar <coughs> perdón, <coughs> la declaración de, del Alto Comisionado. Posteriormente explicaremos la dinámica para las preguntas y las respuestas. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos nuevamente. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, good afternoon. It is just over four years uh, since my predecessor, Navi Pile, was invited to Mexico. And since then, there have been highly significant legislative developments, including the constitutional reforms of 2011 and this year's amendments, Uh, which paved the way for new general laws addressing two of Mexico's most pressing human rights issues, namely enforced disappearances and torture. The approval and implementation of both these laws will require the active participation of victims and civil society organizations and must be fully aligned with international human rights standards. On the international level, Mexico has for many years been a staunch supporter of human rights. It has hosted a fully-fledged UN Human Rights Country Office, currently consisting of some 30 staff since 2002. Mexico has played a very important and constructive role in the Human Rights Council in Geneva, where recent examples of its positive engagement include sponsoring some key resolutions on the rights of migrants, indigenous peoples, and persons with disabilities, as well as on the independence of the judiciary. Mexico has also ratified almost all of the main international human rights uh, treaties. During my visit, I met with key officials of the state, including His Excellency President uh, Peña Neto, Uh, whom I thank most warmly for the invitation and with whom I had a constructive and frank uh, discussion this morning. I too met the Ministers of uh, Foreign Affairs and Interior, uh, the President of the Supreme Court, the Attorney General, a group of Senators, and the President of the National Conference of Governors. I also had discussions with the Secretaries of National Defense and of the Navy and with the National Security Commissioner. Uh, during uh, these meetings, I was informed of a number of significant constitutional and legal advances over the past four years. Uh, these include constitutional amendments relating to transparency uh, and access to public information combating corruption, disappearances, and uh, torture. New legislation includes the law for the protection of human rights defenders and journalists, the general law on victims, the Amparo law, and most recently, the general law on the rights of children and adolescents, and the National Code on Criminal Procedures. In addition, important policy measures have been taken Uh, such as the adoption of the National Human Rights uh, Program uh, 2014 to 2018 and protocols to investigate torture and disappearances. Gender warning systems have recently begun operating, as have programs aimed at addressing the challenges posed by migration and across-the-board training programs for police, judiciary, and other uh, civil servants. I welcomed the recent rulings of the Supreme Court regarding same-sex marriage, torture, and the protection of personal liberty and due process. At a local level, human rights programs have been adopted in five states, and there is a commitment to 
extend this throughout the country. Moreover, the Mexican government has made many admirable, admirable commitments to change domestic laws and uh, practices both at the Human Rights Council's Universal Periodic Review, a process applied equally to all states, and to various committees which monitor a country's compliance with its legal obligations under the international human rights treaties uh, it has ratified. And it will therefore continue to be measured against those obligations and commitments. However, uh, despite this progress towards building a solid human rights framework, uh, which is recognized and greatly valued by me and many others, uh, my visit has been very sobering with regard to the daily realities for millions of people here in Mexico itself. And ultimately, it is the people who judge. It is neither myself, my office, the UN, or state officials who can declare enough is being done or has been done. It is only the people who can do this, especially the most disadvantaged, the victims or families of victims of crime who have the credibility to pass judgment. Many uh, of the issues raised by my predecessor four years ago remain of concern, and many of the people I have spoken to painted a very bleak and consistent picture of a society that is racked by high levels of insecurity, disappearances and killings, continuing harassment of human rights defenders and journalists, violence against women, and terrible abuses of migrants and refugees transiting the country on their way to the United States. Official statistics show that 98% of all crimes in Mexico remain unsolved, with the great majority of them never even properly investigated. It is therefore not surprising the citizens of Mexico feel insecure, notwithstanding the drop in the homicide and kidnapping rates uh, which we all welcome. I do not want to uh, simply repeat the statement made uh, last Friday by the Inter-America Commission on Human Rights, the IACHR, uh, at the end of their visit to Mexico. I do, however, fully endorse the IACHR's findings, which uh, very much coincide with the views of my office and of the various other UN international human rights experts and bodies which have recently visited or reported on the situation in Mexico. And indeed, the IACHR's recommendations were also backed by the President of the National Commission for Human Rights, as well as by many civil society organizations, illustrating that there is a very broad consensus nationally, regionally, and internationally on the gravity of the human rights situation in Mexico today. Uh, for a country that is not engaged in conflict, the estimated figures are simply staggering. Uh, 150, uh, and 151, 200, sorry, 151,233 people killed between December 2006 and August 2015, including thousands of transiting migrants. At least 26,000 people missing many believed to be as a result of enforced disappearances since 2007. Thousands of women and girls are sexually assaulted or uh, become victims of the crime of uh, feminicide or femicide. And hardly anyone is convicted for the above crimes. Part of the violence uh, can be laid at the door of the country's powerful and ruthless organized crime groups which have been making life a misery for people living in several of Mexico's 32 states. I condemn their actions unreservedly, uh, but many enforced disappearances, acts of torture, and extrajudicial killings are alleged to have been carried out by federal, state, and municipal uh, authorities, including the police and some segments of the army, either acting in their own interests or in collusion with organized criminal groups. The devastatingly corrosive impact 
of organized crime and the huge amounts of money these gangs command is co-opting or corrupting key institutions and in some areas reducing Mexico's impressive array of laws to mere words on paper. The combination of fear, greed, and chronic impunity is potent, and millions of people are suffering from this poisonous cocktail, which once brewed is hard to eliminate. A succession of, uh, of specific recent incidents have drawn considerable international attention and concern. First, on the 30th of June 2014, the military authorities announced that soldiers, uh, while uh, fighting off an assault on a warehouse in the municipality of Tlatlaya in Mexico State, had killed 22 of the attackers, including a 15-year-old girl. It took several months, uh, one brave witness, and some courageous uh, journalism before an altogether different story emerged suggesting that the majority of the 22 people had actually surrendered and then uh, been summarily executed. And three female uh, survivors had been subjected to arbitrary detention and torture. Since then, uh, more disturbing features have emerged, including the apparent alteration of the crime scene and fabrication of charges against the survivors as well as the nature of the operational orders given to the officer in charge of the operation. Shortly before this uh, serious incident, the military code had been amended, placing the military under civilian jurisdiction in case of crimes committed against civilians. The Tlatlaya case is one of, those, uh, one of the first to be examined under this revised system, and its progress will therefore be closely watched. Public uh, confidence in federal and local institutions uh, was further seriously undermined by the enforced disappearance in Iguala, in Guerrero State, of uh, 42, uh, 43 students uh, from the Ayotzinapa Teacher Training uh, College and the killing of six others. Reports uh, strongly suggest that local police engaged in repeated ferocious attacks and ambushes against the unarmed students, as well as against a local soccer team. The recent report by the Interdisciplinary Group of Independent Experts, the IGIE, uh, which was appointed by the Inter-America Commission on Human Rights and invited by the Mexican government to follow up on the investigation of the Iguala case, dismissed the original official investigation's assertion that the students' bodies had been burned in a municipal dump. It also revealed that uh, federal security forces were fully aware of what was happening while it was happening, uh, but did not intervene. It stated the, that the extent and complexity of the operations of various uh, different police forces involved in the ambushing, arresting, shooting, and enforced disappearance of the students meant there must have been uh, centralized coordination. The Iguala case received huge attention, not just here in Mexico itself, uh, but all across the, the world, and became a test case of the authorities' willingness and ability to tackle violent crime and corruption. If the true fate of the students is finally revealed as a result of a thorough and determined investigation, and the full range of perpetrators are identified, prosecuted, and convicted with reparations granted to the victims, this terrible case could have a salutary effect on many similar situations across the country. It is important that the government acts decisively on the IGIE's recommendations, including its insistence that the authorities reverse their decision not to allow experts to interview members of the 27th Battalion, uh, Infantry Battalion, who were allegedly present on the scene when some of the attacks took place. Both the IGIE and the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team shed light on the shortcomings and irregularities relating to forensic services in Mexico and an adequately resourced national autonomous forensic institution 
needs to be created as a matter of urgency. The reason why I have placed uh, so much attention on the Iguala case when so many other equally disturbing crimes have been committed in Mexico in recent years is that coupled with the subsequent discovery of a number of mass graves containing bodies that turned out uh, not to belong to the disappeared students but to other unknown victims of unknown killers, the Iguala case is a microcosm of the chronic problems underlying the relentless wave of human rights violations taking place across Mexico. In particular, it highlights the prevalence of impunity and the disregard for victims that affect the entire country. Other, high, uh, other recent uh, high-profile cases uh, which have yet to be properly resolved include the killings of nine people in Apatzingan in January 2015 and 43 people including one police officer in Tanwatu in May. The Iguala case also highlighted the weaknesses of the police, including their frequent direct involvement in committing crimes uh, themselves. In Iguala, according to compelling evidence uncovered by the IGIE investigation, uh, municipal, state, and federal police, along with other state officials and the army, were all involved, either in the crimes themselves or in failing to protect the victims or in taking part in the ensuing cover-up. As uh, one of the people I met in the past few days put it, and I quote, this is a country where if you are a victim of a crime, the last people you call are the police, end quote. If the police do not function properly, then the entire justice system risks becoming uh, dysfunctional. The new criminal justice system will have to overcome the problems confronting police and forensics, as well as the weakness of the investigation system. Uh, as I said earlier, there is a very strong convergence of views about the extent and nature of the human rights problems in Mexico among UN bodies, the IACHR, the National uh, Commission for Human Rights, civil society, academics, foreign diplomats, and above all, survivors and relatives of the tens of thousands of victims. Mexico has time and again been very generous in its invitations, not just to successive high commissioners like myself, but also to other UN uh, human rights entities, such as the various uh, independent UN experts. So it is a surprise to us all when the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Juan Mendez, on publishing his recent report on Mexico, uh, was subjected to virulent uh, personal attacks by some politicians despite the fact uh, that the prevalence of torture, again usually at the hands of the police and investigators during the initial period after arrest, is well established. Unfortunately, this intolerance of public criticism has also manifested itself in reactions to most other recent hu international human rights reports on Mexico. My message on this new and disturbing trend, which is so at odds with Mexico's constructive role at the Human Rights Council in Geneva, uh, is as follows. Instead of shooting the messenger, let us focus on the message, we are all on your side. We all want to assist Mexico. Ignoring what is happening to this great country is not an option for us, and it should not be an option for the country's ele elected politicians and state officials whose responsibility is to protect the country's citizens as well as the migrants and refugees on its territory. Pointing out structural problems as well as intervening on specific cases is an important part of the assistance we offer to many countries. Nothing I have raised today will be particularly surprising to most Mexicans, and especially not to the poorest and the most marginalized. I met with dozens of NGOs and other members of civil society from many parts of the country, and was particularly struck by their courage. Many have been repeatedly threatened or even attacked, or even attacked 
and their determination and commitment to keep working for a better Mexico despite the ob obstacles they face. I urge the authorities to offer much better protection both to human rights defenders uh, and to journalists who have suffered an appalling litany of murders, threats, beatings, and other forms of intimidation in recent years. A number of NGOs raised the issue of companies involved in so-called mega projects failing to consult with indigenous peoples whose land and resources they plan to exploit. And I call on the government to ensure that these companies in future take more care to establish proper consultation processes and enable the indigenous people to participate actively in the process of development. Above all, I want to thank all the victims, the relatives of victims who agreed to meet me and relate the traumatic experiences they have gone through, some of them at the hands of employees of the state, some at the hands of criminal gangs. They included women and indigenous people and each person's story was intensely personal, an important antidote to the numbing nature of the incomplete statistics of the murdered, the raped, and the disappeared. I also listened to a group of relatives of people who have disappeared, ranging from the daughter of a man who was forcibly disappeared in 1974 to a woman whose son was forcibly disappeared in September 2014. I wish everyone could meet and hear them. Uh, to have a loved one disappear, to know, to not know if they are dead or alive, if they, if they died, how much they have suffered or how much they suffered, how long it took, or if they are still alive, where they are held and in what conditions. To have this awful mix of loss and impotence, this lack of certainty, gnawing away at you day after day, week after week, month after month, is a truly dreadful thing. It becomes doubly cruel when the authorities do not even bother or dare to investigate what happened to your son, your daughter, your sister, partner, or best friend. I'll repeat the numbing statistic once again. Mexico has, at the very least, 26,000 missing people with new cases occurring every day. The amount of misery attached to that statistic is impossible to comprehend. The failure of the police of the justice system to clarify the whereabouts of the victims and what happened to them, and above all, uh, of successive governments and the political system as a whole to stop these crimes is not just regrettable, it is deeply tragic tragic for the individuals involved and tragic for the country as a whole. Over the past few days, I was heartened to hear senior government officials describe a new determination to confront these challenges, and I informed them that my office is ready to assist in any way we can. In this vein, I will follow up with a list of recommendations for the Mexican government, and in the meantime, I would like to emphasize the need for the following key measures. The first is to urgently strengthen the Attorney General's offices across the country to ensure that human rights violations are properly investigated, leading to prompt results. Second, to urgently strengthen the capacity of the police to carry out their public security functions in line with human rights obligations, including developing a legal framework on the use of force. Third, to adopt a time frame for the withdrawal of the military from public security functions. And fourth, to implement the IGIE's recommendations and consider similar follow-up mechanisms for other serious cases. The international community is full of goodwill towards Mexico, but ultimately it is only the Mexicans, and especially Mexico's political class, who can resolve these massive problems. The country has amazing human as well as abundant material resources. The problems have grown so large, it is a daunting task for any government to sort them out. But the government that succeeds, the one that radically reforms the police, makes justice work, 
slashes the crime rate and jails the criminals, puts the army back in the barracks, protects the marginalized, works hardest to reduce violence against women, is the one the nation needs and wants. The government that taps fully into its citizens' desire and ability to create a state that works is the government that will be remembered and praised by future generations. Such a government would be able to attract a massive influx of foreign direct uh, investment, which would in turn stimulate greater and much wider prosperity uh, for its population. I pray that this government can bind itself to a renewed sense of urgency in solving the enormous uh, human rights challenges it faces so that every citizen will judge it to be that government. And I thank you very much for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Muchas gracias, Alto Comisionado, Zaira Adal Hussein. Eh, Vamos, vamos. <risa> la, dinámica, eh, la dinámica es la siguiente. Les vamos a pedir, por favor, que digan su nombre completo, que hablen claro al micrófono. Si no hablan al micrófono, el alto comisionado no, no va a poder escuchar la interpretación de sus preguntas. Que sean, por favor, muy, muy claros y muy breves para que más colegas periodistas puedan también preguntar. Y vamos a estar agrupando las preguntas de tres en tres. Vamos a estar dando la palabra. Entonces, solamente tengan un poco de paciencia. Vamos a empezar uno a la izquierda, otro a la derecha. Entonces, vamos a empezar por acá, después por acá y después por aquí, por favor. En la siguiente ronda, seguimos, seguimos pasando la palabra. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Marco Campillo, del periódico Crónica. Señalamiento sobre el caso Tlatalla y también, también sobre Iguala. A partir de estas observaciones y de estos señalamientos, ¿Qué sería lo más grave? ¿La poca eficiencia de la autoridad, la falta de respuesta inmediata o la falta de voluntad para investigar y encontrar a los culpables? Gracias. Bien, ¿qué tal? Alejandro Pacheco de SDP Noticias. Preguntar, eh, después de hacer esta valoración, eh, y quiero que quede como claro, eh, de manera, sí, de manera clara, pues, um, ¿se puede decir que… ¿Existe entonces un clima generalizado de violaciones a derechos humanos en el país, en México, luego de este análisis? Gracias. Buenas tardes, Néstor Jiménez del periódico La Razón. Un poco profundizando en esa pregunta, si usted coincide con el señalamiento de la Comisión Interamericana en el sentido de que la crisis, que hay una crisis generalizada, una grave crisis en todo el país, ¿O esta es solo focalizada a unos estados en los que se presentan los casos de los que hizo mención hace un momento? The uh, assessment and the recommendations that were uh, found in the interdisciplinary report, I think, answers the question uh, that you pose. And we uh, strongly believe that the recommendations need to be implemented in full. We recognize and welcome the fact the government has extended the mandate of the interdisciplinary group. And uh, from my discussions with uh, key government officials, Uh, they pledged their uh, determination to work with uh, in this investigation so that we can reach, to, uh, uh, reach the truth and establish what exactly happened. Uh, in terms of the issue of whether human rights uh, violations are generalized, I, I think I've answered the question because if 98% of criminal cases remain unsolved, the Mexican citizen does not enjoy the protection of the law. And if you do not enjoy the protection of the law from, any th from anyone uh, who poses a threat to you, your person or your, your property or your, your rights, uh, then of course one can make the argument uh, that the human rights of the people of Mexico remain under threat. And for that reason, Uh, I have urged uh, the senior authorities of this country to act with urgency. And it's clear 
that there is movement in the right direction with the number of policies enacted, the number of laws that have been recently produced. But the average citizen, uh, we sense, doesn't feel this. Now, there could be good reason. Most time, in most cases, laws take time before they are implemented. Uh, but it's very clear from the desperation of the people that we spoke to that uh, it's not a matter where time can be a, a seen as a luxury. And uh, the whole nation must be uh, sort of seized by the urgent need to ensure that this situation changes. You simply cannot have a country as, as uh, important as Mexico have a a uh, percentage of 98 for crimes that go unsolved. It simply cannot be the case. And so uh, everyone must uh, pull together to ensure that this is brought down along with the observance of uh, human rights uh, during the stages of investigation so that there are no uh, violations of human rights uh, in an effort to reduce crime, of course. We have to be very clear about that. Thank you. María Eugenia Jiménez de Milenio, preguntarle qué fue lo que platicó con el presidente Peña Nieto hace un rato, si tuvieron algunos acuerdos y si este panorama que nos presenta en este momento lo platicó con él, cuál fue su respuesta. Marta Elena Ramírez, de Voz Pública y Radio Bilingüe. Eh, señor comisionado, preguntarle sobre su señalamiento respecto a la salida del Ejército. Si esto es una posición, ya lo dijo usted, de, de manera clara, si podría abundar en el tema y si esto hay experiencias a las que pudiera hacer referencia en, es, en ese sentido. James Blears, Radio France International. How can the Mexican government and systems within Mexico defeat impunity, uh, getting away with the crimes which underpin so many of the appalling uh, tragedies and crimes that happen here in Mexico? Okay. Uh, the first question uh, re relates to the uh, discussion I had with the President earlier today. Um, the discussion was very much along the lines that I presented you, to you today, that we acknowledge uh, the uh, steps taken by the government, by the Senate, uh, by the country as a whole in terms of uh, trying to come to grips with these issues. Uh, but the uh, citizen uh, has yet to really feel the effects of this, and the citizen lives in fear, and the citizen doesn't feel that they have the protection of the law. And I urge the president to, uh, to view uh, all of this with a, a renewed sense of urgency. My sense is the president is fully aware of the dimensions of the problem, uh, and I emphasize that uh, were the executive to instill f a further sense of in, in, in urgency into the process, that we would be seeing results quicker, that we simply cannot allow for the state of impunity to uh, continue by dint of the fact that uh, the police needs a major reform and the Attorney General's office needs to be strengthened in many of the states. Um, in terms of the uh, issue of the returning to barracks, in my discussions with the Secretaries of Defense and of the Navy today, um, I found that they were entire, uh, in entire agreement that uh, this is not something that the military has ever felt comfortable in doing. A, a military force is configured, it's uh, built to deal with external threats of a conventional nature to the sovereignty of a state. Uh, no army, to my knowledge, likes to do policing work. No army, to my knowledge, feels that it can do it well. Uh, no army, to my knowledge, wants to do it for a long time. And uh, my sense is that the sooner we can uh, better uh, ensure that the police and the Attorney General's office 
uh, is able to provide the sort of legal protection that the people of, uh, of uh, Mexico deserve and uh, are entitled to, uh, the quicker then uh, you can have a return to barracks. And uh, on the uh, matter of, of fighting impunity, it's a combination of uh, getting to the heart of the emblematic cases, and in particular Iguala, uh, there is a real opportunity here because there's a complete convergence of, uh, uh, of determination, both on the part of the international community, a regional organization like the Inter-America Commission, uh, and uh, this country to know what happened exactly to the 43 students. And uh, once the veil has been lifted, once we can see what has happened, one hopes that it would untie uh, some of these other cases. We and the victims can be sure to know what has happened, and then, of course, we need to see justice done. Um, and so, uh, when, uh, through a combination of, of measures, I think uh, we hopefully will reach that uh, particular point. ¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes. Nayeli Roldán, de Animal Político. Um, lo que hemos visto en los últimos días es un rechazo por parte de las instituciones mexicanas a eh, los señalamientos, al diagnóstico que han hecho eh, organizaciones internacionales como la Comisión Interamericana, el grupo de expertos y ayer recientemente el titular de la Sedena eh, dijo que eh, la Comisión Interamericana, el grupo, no tiene jurisdicción en México, eso claro todos lo sabemos, pero quisiera eh, conocer su opinión respecto a esta declaración. Y la segunda, esta negativa general que vemos de los funcionarios de las instituciones respecto a lo que está pasando en el país en materia de derechos humanos, ¿cuál es el impacto? Ya lo mencionaba usted un poco en, en, su, en su discurso, que no hay que matar al, al mensajero, pero sí quisiera que, que abundara en esto. ¿Qué tanto afecta, digamos, que, que las instituciones, que los gobernantes no reconozcan, no acepten estas, estas visiones? Gracias. Muy, muy amable, gracias. Sí, ya, yeah, ok. Eh, querido señor Said Ray al Hussein, eh, tenga usted nuestro reconocimiento y felicitación. Yo soy Alfredo Rojas Díaz Durán, soy de la ONG Fundación Unidos por la Paz y la Justicia y de la solidaridad internacional contra la guerra. Eh, mi pregunta es, ¿usted recomendaría al Estado mexicano ante la omisión de haberse adherido como Estado miembro de la Convención de Ginebra y el Estatuto de Roma a que legisle leyes contra crímenes de la humanidad y genocidio? Porque creo que no lo han informado que aquí ha habido varios genocidios y varios masacres en los 60, 70, 80 y 90. Muchas gracias. Y también soy perseguido y me gustaría tener comunicación con usted en el estado que me está hostigando. Muchas gracias. Silvia Elena, por favor, allá atrás. Gracias, Gaby. Eh, ¿Qué tal, eh, comisionado? Quisiera preguntarle si nos pudiera dar su opinión sobre el impacto que ha tenido el grupo interdisciplinario de expertos eh, para el caso Iguala y para la situación en general de derechos humanos en México. Pareciera que eh, pues se le dio mucha confianza a este grupo de expertos en esta investigación en particular, la confianza de la que no goza la PGR. Eh, ¿Sería necesario que más grupos entraran a México a asistir o dar asistencia técnica a otro tipo de casos? Eh, e incluso transitar hacia una comisión contra la impunidad, una idea que ha cobrado relevancia ya en los últimos meses, incluso se ha mencionado el caso de Guatemala como un ejemplo. Gracias. Uh, three good questions again. The, the first uh, answer, uh, in respect of the comments made by public officials, uh, I was so busy in meetings that I really wasn't too aware of what was being said. All I can say, though, is in the meetings with me, I found there was a frankness and openness uh, to discuss these issues and a recognition uh, that, uh, that the, the situation had to change. Um, I uh, pointed out that in many circumstances across the, the globe, uh, if uh, the circumstances were of such a, a gravity, it's quite possible that you have uh, international bodies 
investigate national in national jurisdictions. Um, I also pointed out that it is the nature of the work of our office to comment when we see uh, uh, violations of a, of a grave nature and uh, to make recommendations uh, in that uh, regard. I uh, would draw your attention to statements I made uh, only uh, last uh, Saturday in respect of a uh, an airstrike on the uh, hospital in Kunduz in Afghanistan by allied presumed US aircraft and we uh, too called for an investigation to be done transparently so that we understand what happened in these cases. So it's not just Mexico, it's many countries we look at, it's many countries we comment on uh, and we believe that by shedding light uh, it, we can uh, draw some conclusions from the reactions and what the country uh, is uh, committed to. Uh, I have to say, it's with regret that I spoke about shooting the messenger. Uh, I hope that this attitude will change. Uh, it is not something that we've seen in the past uh, relative only to Mexico. There are many other countries that do that. And we continuously insist that if there is a different view, if there's a different interpretation, let's uh, sit and discuss the substance, or at least uh, public comments could be made on the substance itself. So I hope and I believe in, from the discussions I had with the senior most uh, uh, officials of this country, that uh, this will now change. Uh, in terms of um, uh, the legislation, crimes against humanity and genocide, uh, these uh, topics of uh, conversation could be held in other fora. We didn't have those discussions. Uh, we were looking at the specific cases and how in the approach to uncovering the truth, further truth will emerge, of course, and then on that basis, uh, the Mexican government together with the international community can see how to proceed. Uh, on uh, the experience of SISIG and uh, Guatemala, I think for the time being we do see a determination to press forward with the investigation on Iguala. The Minister of Interior assured me of this yesterday and uh, my hope is that we, if we can uncover the truth for the sake of the families of the, of the missing, that this may well open the way for uh, this mechanism to be employed elsewhere. There is no shame for any government, any government, to ask for help. Uh, Mexico is a great country. It has a major role to play in the international community, and it does play it. It does play it. Uh, there is no harm done to the national prestige when on occasion a country has to ask for help. Uh, many countries seek the assistance of experts and others. It's not a comment that can sort of defile the reputation of the country. And I think the, the awareness and the uh, preparedness by which uh, this government uh, has opened uh, the door to outside investigators needs to be further encouraged and, and further pushed forward. Um, and then we will see what happens. Eh, Tom, acá el compañero de lentes, después ahí atrás Ana y por acá el colega. De... Mm, ya hizo una pregunta, colega periodista, ¿cierta? Federico, ¿tenías una pregunta atrás? Ok, vamos. Prince Arad, welcome to Mexico. Uh, there is a Cuban rights crisis in Mexico, but only in some regions in this country. Uh, said Luis Gonzalez, president of National Human Rights Commission, specifically for the UN in what areas, please? Buenas tardes, Ana Lagner del periódico El Economista. Yo quería abordar tres temas. El primero es eh, cómo se puede garantizar la independencia del Tribunal Constitucional del país, de la Suprema Corte de Justicia de la Nación, cuando el nombramiento de los ministros se eh, queda a cargo del presidente de la República y de, este, del Senado de la República. La otra es saber cuál va a ser el plan de trabajo que va a tener la oficina del alto comisionado en México. Ello a propósito de 
eh, pues que no se ha visto en las últimas fechas al representante, a Javier Hernández Valencia. Y la tercera es, hablando del caso Iguala y Ayotzinapa, en específico si hubo algún tipo de comunicación con los defensores de derechos humanos que los asisten, si han recibido eh, datos de que han sido acosados, amenazados o intentado desprestigiarlos. Gracias. Um, okay, uh, three questions. The, the first question, my response would be the same as I said earlier. Um, you don't enjoy your human rights if you don't have the protection of the law in a very physical sense. If there's no police that you can go and trust, if you can't be sure that a complaint filed before the Attorney General's office, whether it be at a state level or federal level, will ever be investigated and prosecuted. And so you can cite a large number of human rights um, that uh, will never seek uh, remedy or redress in their violation, or should there be violation, if you do not have the rule of law operating clearly. And, and so my, my response would be uh, pretty much to repeat what I've said uh, earlier. In terms of the Supreme Court and the independence of it, uh, if the appointments are uh, m politically made, Um, it's not something that I can really comment on. Uh, it hasn't been the subject of my discussions, but clearly it would be important for uh, Mexico in the context of an internal discussion uh, and uh, at a later stage perhaps uh, when I'm uh, invited again, I hope I'm invited again, uh, we can discuss it and I'll be able to uh, respond in a, a clearer, uh, clearer way. Uh, the working plan of the office, we're still negotiating uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the activities. Uh, we've uh, reached uh, sort of close to a final draft. Uh, it will take a little bit longer and we hope that we will have um, the uh, uh, agreement in place. Uh, I have uh, uh, very much uh, uh, appreciated the hospitality with which I was received and the willingness for my interlocutors to hear Uh, uncomfortable, deeply uncomfortable uh, uh, sort of views from our side, which I'm sure they are themselves all too aware of exist in the country, but it's not always easy to hear it from a UN official. And uh, I appreciated that they listened very carefully and listened uh, graciously. Uh, in terms of the um, cases, did we meet uh, with um, Uh, human rights defenders assisting the investigations. I, I, I perhaps my colleague uh, Jesus Peña can answer because I met so many people I didn't know them by name or couldn't remember at my age, couldn't remember where they were from. But uh, did we meet? We did meet. So that's the answer to the question. Muchas gracias por haber participado. Vamos a cerrar aquí por el tiempo. Eh, vamos a distribuir a todas las personas presentes la declaración que ha dado el alto comisionado. También se las vamos a enviar por correo. Asimismo, la van a poder encontrar en nuestra página web. Y bueno, esperamos que eh, hagan toda la difusión de este mensaje. Muchas gracias por asistir. Thank you so much. Thank you.